The message you're about to listen to is a message from Apostle Eric Nyamiche, the chairman of the Church of Pentecost. Apostle Eric Nyamiche preaches the gospel in its simplest form to help the believers walk in Christ and also how the believer relate with his world. This year, the message is on unleashing the church to possess nation. Join us and let's learn from Apostle Eric Nyamiche and be a blessing to the world. If you are new to this page, make sure that you subscribe to the channel and turn on that notification bell so that when new videos are uploaded, you can have access to it. Make sure you go to our own page and check out for more videos. Thank you. And now don't go to the, now the Gentiles come to you. We, too, we want to see him. And they had to do some consultation. And then Andrews, together with Philip, went to Jesus. Let's listen to what they are going to say. Philip went to tell Andrews, Andrews, and Philip in turn told Jesus. Jesus replied, the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Now listen, if they tell you that some people want to see you, is that the response? Huh? Well, either they should come or they shouldn't. Has that got to do with you being glorified? Because the verse 11 follows the verse 10 in Isaiah. When the, the nations come to him, God will stretch forth his hand. So when the nations were coming to him, he knew what will follow. That the hour is going to come. God is going to stretch forth his hands to draw the other nations unto himself. Because the grace cannot just come to the Messiah. The rabbi, no. Circumcision will bar them from coming. The law will stop them from coming. They were not qualified. Even when they are proselytes and they join the synagogue, they sit at the back. When they close service, they have to leave before the holy people, the Jews, will come. You dare not touch a Jew, how much less the rabbi. You can't do that. You can't do that. But they said the people are looking for you. And then he says that the hour has come. Look at verse 24. Shall we read 24 together? I tell you, unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. That is Jesus. People want to see you. You say, when the kernel of seed, have they asked for a kernel of seed? Not knowing that he himself was God's seed. The mistake that the devil did was to have planted Jesus, a single seed. That is why he says that the thief comes not but to kill, to steal, and to destroy. But I have come that you might have life and have it in the full. So he was the fullness of God. And then somehow the devil, wanting to get rid of him, took the seed of God. Planted him in the belly of the earth. He didn't wait there till the fourth day, so he was not rotten. He died. When you plant a viable seed and it rots, then that is a problem. But if the seed does not rot and the seed dies, it will germinate. He says that if a kernel myself, the seed of God, if I don't fall to the ground and die, I will not produce these ones. Look at many of us, little Jesuses, that has been produced from the resurrection. Always remember that Jesus Christ, a descendant of David, was raised from the dead. Remember, without this, Christianity is of no use. Without this, he was raised from the dead. So he planted him. This is what Peter said, Acts chapter 2, verse 23, 24. Acts 2, 23, 24. This man was handed over to you by God's deliberate plan. So his, his death was, was, was a calculated plan because Isaiah has said it already. That it was going to happen. And it was not by mistake. That Judas betrayed him. It was calculated. 
and foreknowledge, and you, with the help of wicked men, put him to death by nailing him on the cross. But God raised him from the dead, freeing him from the agony of death, because it was impossible for death to keep its hold on him. Now, this thing is loaded. Peter would not have said for it was impossible. Many things went into keeping Jesus in the grave. Many things went to it. To the fact that the apostle Paul said, this power that is available to us, it is like the power that God exerted. When you say God, the creator of the heavens and the earth, if he has to exert power, then the resurrection was something else. Now listen, let me say that again. If God had to exert power to bring Jesus out of the grave, then the resurrection was something else. That is why Paul says, I want to know him and the power that raised him from the dead because there's something about the dead. There's something about his resurrection. Something about his resurrection. I want to know him and the power that raised him from the dead. I want to know him. Hmm. Matthew 27. We we'll read verse 50. 27, 50. And when Jesus had cried out again in a loud voice, he gave up his spirit. So Jesus died. Don't let anybody tell you that he didn't die. He died. That is why Paul says that according to the scriptures, he died. Verse 57 to 61, same chapter, 57. As evening approached, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who had himself become a disciple of Jesus. Going to Pilate, he asked for Jesus' body, and Pilate ordered that it be given to him. Joseph took the body, wrapped it in a clean linen cloth, and placed it in his own new tomb that he had cut out of the rock. He rolled a big stone in front of the entrance of the tomb and went away. He was buried according to the scriptures. 62. The next day, the one after the preparation day, the chief priests and the Pharisees went to Pilate. Say, they said, we remember that while he was still alive, that deceiver, that is Jesus, said, after three days, I will rise again. So give the order for the tomb to be made secure until the third day, so that by the fourth day, you will, get, you will be rotten. You see, that is the theory being applied here. Otherwise, his disciples may come and steal the body and tell the people that he has been raised from the dead. See, they, they, they suspected that this man will come out of the grave. So, he has been raised from the dead. This last deception will be worse than the first. But for us, this last blow is greater than the first one. <laughs> oh, this is Satan speaking. But the reverse is what we speak. God has stretched forth his hands once. And this last one will bring many to himself. This last. So the tomb was secured. 28 from verse 1. After the Sabbath at dawn, on the first day of the week, Mary Madeline and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There, there was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb, 
rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothes were white as snow. Verse 5. The angel said to the woman, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. Let's read 6 together. He is not here. He has risen. Just as he said, Come see the place where he lay. He is not here. Come, this is the proof. Just as he said. Now, so, the Pharisees and the chief priests, they also heard what he said. And then they secured the tomb. But a mighty earthquake, by the second aspect of the powerful hand of God, raised Jesus from the dead. He is not here, he's risen. Just as he said. Come see where he lay. Another angel told, another record is that the angel said, you don't look for the living among the dead. Don't come to the graveyard because the man is not dead. He is alive. Don't come here. But there was a conspiracy. That is very serious. There was a conspiracy. When I was coming to church, I heard you reading it. There was a conspiracy. While the women were on their way, some of the guards went into the city and reported to the chief priest everything that had happened. When the chief priest had met with the elders and, and devised a plan, they gave the soldiers a large sum of money, telling them, you are to say, his disciples came during the night and stole him away while we were asleep. And this, you should, a soldier shouldn't say this to the, the commander. But listen, listen to politicians. And you see what is going on in countries. Verse 14. If this report gets to the governor, we will satisfy him and keep him out of trouble. We will satisfy him and keep you out of trouble. So the soldiers took the money and did as they were instructed. And this story, now this is very important, and this story has been widely circulated among the Jews to this very day. And the word there is true. To this very day, today, 21st April 2019, to this very day, people are still circulating falsehood about the resurrection. But they can't keep it because the resurrection is not just a story. It is a life-changing event. To this very day, to this very day, you see, in AD 165, Justin Matthias wrote to the Jews of his day, you have sent men throughout the world to proclaim a godless and a lawless heresy that has sprung from one Jesus, a Galilean deceiver, whom we crucified. But the disciples told him by night from the tomb, and now you disciples deceive men by asserting he has risen from the dead and ascended into heaven. 165 AD, this man wrote. And today, many people say that Jesus never died. He just fell unconscious and he was put in a, 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 a cool term. Some people also say that the disciples, they say something in their eyes, hallucination. They had some dreams. They didn't see any angel. He died. And others are saying that the resurrection is not a real thing. It is something that happens in a man's heart by faith. These things are going on today. But you see, those of us who are born again, according to 1 John chapter 5, verse 10, and I want us to read this one. Pay attention to this. Pay attention to this one. Whoever believes in the Son of God accepts this testimony. Whoever does not believe God has made him out to be a liar because they have not believed the testimony God has given about his Son. Now, give me the King James or any other version or another NIV. These days we have to be careful about the Scripture. 
way the versions are coming, you need to know the Bible. Otherwise, you'll be reading things that are not of God. There's some serious thing that has been taken out of this one. This is King James, and this is the record that God has given us eternal life, and this life is in the Son of verse 10. Verse 10. All who believe in the Son of God knows in their heart that this testimony is true. Why do you take this from the Bible? This is serious. All who believe in the Son of God know that the resurrection is a fact. So when people do not believe you, you know. That is why Jesus said, you are my witness. Let them say what they want to say. Because as of now, people are still saying he didn't rise. But the Bible says anyone that believes in the Son of God has a testimony in himself. You know it. Because... The resurrection is not just an event. It is a life-giving event. It changes life. And you are a testimony. Who is a testimony? Let me see by a show of hands. It's a life-giving experience. It is not just a story. It cannot be relegated to history. No. No. It is a life-changing event. The beginning of a new creation. The resurrection is the beginning of a new creation. A people of God. An army of God. Created to, re- to, to be like God. And to reveal the manifold wisdom of God to principalities and powers. So the beneficiaries of the resurrection have a testimony in themselves. That is what we are trying to say from John. Romans 8 says that as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the children of God. But when you get to verse 17, Romans 8, 17, please. And let's read 16 before 17. 16 before 17. For his spirit joins with our spirit to affirm that we are God's children. There's something in our spirit that joins with his spirit. You have a testimony in your heart. That indeed he was raised from the dead. The resurrection story cannot be relegated to history. Now listen to this one. The power of the resurrection and the resurrected Christ is not in the grave. It is in you. Hmm. I'm bringing my message down to a close now. As we celebrate the resurrection of Christ, which Paul is saying that always remember that Jesus Christ, a descendant of David, was raised from the dead. The resurrected Christ and the power of the resurrection is in you. Paul says that this is a mystery. That Christ will be in you. He says that it is God's hope of glory. Christ in you, the hope of glory. So that through you, he will reconcile the world back to himself. Now, when the resurrection power was in him, people looked to him and then they sought him and he gave them life. Now the resurrection power is in you. What kind of a person ought you to be? What kind of a person ought you to be? There is no need for us to come sit and always annually sing about the resurrection of Christ. He is risen. He will not die again. He is alive forever. But he is looking up to us, those of us who bear the power of his resurrection. And this power is not just for casting out demons. No. It is not just for healing the sick. It is for transforming nations. We are limiting the power too much. It is for nations. He took the world. We can take nations. The resurrection power in you has made you to become like him. That is why in the Old Testament, God will say that I will make you a God unto. In the New Testament, we have been made gods unto our nations because of the resurrection power that is in us. The resurrection power 
that is in us. If the Spirit of God that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, it shall quicken your mortal body. By the resurrection, we have been given the power and the authority to make disciples. That is why Jesus said, all power has been given unto me. Therefore, go and make disciples. So let us go. No force will be able to stand against us. Because you cannot come to this church and say that I'm the pastor of this church. No, people will ask you, who brought you here? By what authority are you the pastor of this church? No. You should come by an authority of a secular letter signed by someone. You can't come and say that I'm the pastor. No. But by the resurrection, he has given us the authority. And besides, he has given us the power. Sometimes you can come here as a pastor of this church. Yes, by authority. But you need power to deliver. Power is the ability to deliver. You need both to be effective. But in the resurrection, both have been given to us. So you can sit down and see corruption at your workplace. You can sit down and be so unconcerned about the lost. How can you have the spirit of God? And you walk on the streets and you are so unconcerned about the loss. How can you sing about the power of God and be so unconcerned about the loss? Why don't you get frustrated when there's so much evil around you? Are you a child of God? Is there resurrection power in you? By the resurrection power, we have been given the message of reconciliation. Paul says that is the message we preach. Jesus and him crucified. And we have been given the ministry of reconciliation as well. By the resurrection power, we have been called unto holy living. You see, the resurrection power has made us new creations. And this new creation that I've been fashioned in Christ is called unto a holy living. You cannot just behave anyhow and sing about Christ. No, it is a new beginning for you called unto a holy living. And lastly, by the resurrection power, we will rise again. At the sound of the trumpet, we will rise again. Always remember that Jesus Christ, a descendant of King David, was raised from the dead. This is the message we preach. Remember at home, that Jesus Christ, a descendant of King David, was raised from the dead. Remember this in the, at the office, that Jesus Christ, a descendant of David, was raised from the dead. Remember, when you're on the bus, these days, because of the prosperity message, which has done so much damage to Christianity, so much damage. We have become so self-centered. Everybody wants things for himself. Otherwise, those days, people had cars, but they would deliberately go and sit in a passenger car, and they would, they would sit in front. When the car just takes off, they turn like this. They were bank managers. They were doctors, yet they preached the gospel. They were not ashamed of Christ. But you, I want to tell you, we need to roll up our sleeves. It is time for us to work. Jesus will not come and die again. There is no need to sing about the resurrection when the ministry that he has entrusted into our hands, we don't want to carry it out. Do we want him to come back and die again? He hopes in us. That power in you is enough to change lives, to change situations, to build a better Ghana, to build a better church. Let us go out there and possess the nations. Let's change the mentality of people. Let the lawyers among us put themselves together and then petition for the poor. Let the lawyers among us put themselves together and change the judiciary. Let the doctors amongst us put themselves together and make a difference by the resurrection power. Otherwise, Christianity is of no use. Christianity must be relevant to the society. We make too much noise. Look at this big auditorium. 
the amount of money that has been sunk into this, yet we have not finished. Just to gather people together. And when all of you go out, you all go and sleep and you leave Jesus weeping and wailing on the cross because no one wants to join him on the street. Then what is the use for this? What is the use for spending all this money for this one? What is the use? I am praying that people will put themselves together. Let the nurses put themselves together and change that sphere. Let us put ourselves together. Look at all of you. Are you pastors? Don't you know that you are pastors? What ministry do you have outside this church? What ministry do you have? I want some of us to form NGOs and change situations. Go to the north. People don't have water to drink. But how many houses do you have? Sell one of them and provide water for some people. Provide water for some people. Otherwise, the resurrection is of no value. Jesus said, I was in prison. You never came to visit me. I was at the hospital. You never ventured. What kind of Christianity are we presenting in our generation? We need to go back to those days. I pray that all of us will go out there and change our spheres. Teachers, the best of teachers in Ghana are in the public schools, yet the, the poorest of children are found in the public schools. Because they will go, every teacher is studying in Ghana. They, because, they, they are not studying because they are interested in the people. They are studying because they want big pests. They have master's degree. They have MPhil. They teach in the primary schools. They teach in the secondary schools. They teach one lesson and they are lost. Are you part of them? Is that Christianity? Is that what the resurrection power taught you? We need to go back there and change our world. Otherwise, Christianity will be of no value. Let the politicians not behave like the chief priests behave. That when they hear it, we know what to do. But I want some of us to go to that arena and change the situation. Change the situation. Don't be afraid. I don't think we should come to church and sit here. Especially those of you who have had some education. Don't hide your light. When you have a lamp, the Bible says you put it on the lampstand so that it will brighten every corner. You are saved because of someone. Remember that Jesus Christ, a descendant of David, was raised from the dead. And the resurrection Christ and the power of the resurrection is in you. Shall we rise to our feet? Ask yourself, what shall I render unto the Lord for all his benefits towards me? What shall I do? What shall I do? You are a businessman. How much money do you want to earn? Why do you get to the custom barrier? You pay to the custom officer and you take the rest. How much money do you want to have? So that you leave a lot of people still poor. How much money do you want to have? Jesus would never have done that. If he did, he would not have been the savior of the world. You can't save the world, but you can save the community. Shall we lift up hands now and surrender everything to him? Surrender and say, God, I want to do something for you. Show me what to do. Show me, show me something to do for you, God. I want to do a thing for you. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. What can you do for the master? Hug the voice of Jesus. Oh, that was son. Fills are wide and harvest waiting. Don't sit here. Don't come and listen to sermons and go. No. The resurrection power has made you a minister of the gospel. Find your space. Find your space. Oh, Tayen. I want you to open your eyes and look at me. We are not going to pray for a long time because I've taken some time trying to preach. 
All of us are royal priests. We are priests to offer sacrifices to God. But we are kings to put order in the society. And the church is God's factor of change. The church is not an end in itself. It's a means to an end. Every one of us should find a ministry to do in the world. And then come to church and receive and go and continue. Every one of us find something to do. Listen, if you sing in the choir, it's not a ministry. It is housekeeping exercise. Huh? If you are an usher, it's not your ministry. It is housekeeping. Ministry is down outside. Find something to do. Find something to do. Now listen, when all of us go out there, we will change the nations. We will change the nations. Are you not frustrated with all kinds of churches in the country, yet the country is still corrupt and rotten? Aren't you frustrated? Is that what Jesus taught us? Or you are just comfortable with your, with your nice car? People go to work, and within six months, they want the best of cars. Why they don't even qualify? If you gain the whole world, and you lose your soul, what have you gained? Now, as I stand here as the chairman of the church, I don't feel that, what do I gain? If all that I have is a chairman, then what will I gain? When I was not a chairman, I was a child of God. I want to plead with you. If you, my children, take what I'm saying, the other churches will come on board. Will come on board. For many of us, even coming to church is a burden because you don't have reason to come to church. Because you don't have anything doing for God outside there. Find a ministry. Change your home. Change the society. Tell yourself that you will make a difference before you die. Shall we lift up hands and begin to pray? Hug the voice of Jesus Christ. Hug the voice of Jesus Christ. Who will go and work today? Fills the world. Fills the world. And harvest waiting. And harvest waiting. Who will bear the streets away? Loud and strong, the master called Rich reward. Rich reward. He offers us. He offers me. We will answer. Anyone that wants to rededicate his life to Jesus, saying that God, for the rest of my life, I give it to you. Use me, Father. I want to have a place to be used. Just lift up your hands up. You want God to use you for the rest of your life. You want to have a ministry out there. God, use me. Just lift up your hands. I will just pray and then we'll bring this ministry to a close. Spirit of the living God. You died for us. You died to make us like you. You died to make power available to us. You died to make available the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth to us. That name that is greater than the rod of Moses. That name that is more powerful than the rod of Elijah. That name that is greater than Abraham's name. That name that is available for us. Even to break chains and to bring people who are in darkness out. You did all this for us, O oh God. Today we have heard your voice. And our hands are up, O oh God. Touch us. Quicken us. Open our eyes. Cause us to understand you well. That we will go out there into our spheres and change our world. Cause us to make a difference, O oh Lord. Open our eyes and teach us what you want us to do in this life and in this world. That we will not just come to church, warm benches and go back. Father, touch us. 
and grant us space in this world and in this life. In Jesus' name, amen.